So it's been a long day, after a long day. I'm tired, and I need something easy to talk about, at least. Easy from my perspective. For those of you who have been subscribed, you know that I did a breakdown of Biden's marijuana pardons the other day. And I think it's valuable to bring those up in the beginning of this video because this video is about the fact that the U.S. government is actively using weed as a way to distract from economic conditions. It should be no surprise that, like, over the... Uh, course of the greatest wealth transfer in history, which was to the corporate class and the banksters and the evil motherfuckers that run this joint, that there has been an increasing push to get people high, to say, oh, you know, shucks, we can deschedule this maybe years later, um, and we can... We can gradually push for this specific thing to be legal now. Because we would rather that you be stoned than accept the reality that we're plunging you into potentially the greatest depression and world war the world has ever seen. And potentially one from which we will not return in one piece. Especially the people who will be atomized against the walls and vaporized for everyone to breathe the ionized remains of um, in a nuclear holocaust. You know, but all these things are happening right now. All these things are happening, and suddenly they're more sympathetic toward weed users. I wonder why, you know? Well... I just feel like it's valuable to bring all that up because the U.S.'s emergency oil reserves have tumbled to their lowest since 1984. You know, it's kind of appropriate that they picked that number, isn't it? It's kind of appropriate that they shrunk them to the point where that number would be what was stated, isn't it? Isn't it fucking appropriate? That during a time when we have to convince Oakland cops not to give robot drones shotguns. Which, by the way, for those of you who watched uh, yesterday's video, uh, you'll be glad to know that the Oakland police have decided not to arm uh, their robot uh, <laughs> drones with, with live ammunition shotguns. You'll be just chuffed and peached to know that. They thought about it, and then they said, Nah, we're good. And they'll definitely keep their promise, because if there's one thing the police are known for, it's their honesty. But they were considering that, and I likened it and linked it to a bunch of Orwellian features that they're adding to a bunch of shit these days. So, I just feel like maybe 1984 is, is, is a nice year for this to mimic, you know? And I think maybe that might just be an extra little jab. Well, you know, we'll just give another country yet a little bit more of our oil so that we'll just sink to that number. Literally 1984, guys. But what does this mean? This is a Reuters article written by Ar Arathi Somasakar. And the article says, U.S. emergency crude oil stocks fell 8.4 million barrels last week to 434.1 million barrels, their lowest since October 1984. And gotta love how it's October that they picked, too. According to U.S. Department of Energy uh, data released on Monday, the release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in the week 
ended September 9th was the steepest draw since May. It comprised of about 6.3 million barrels of sweet crude and about 2 million barrels of sour crude. President Joe Biden in March set a plan to release 1 million barrels per day over six months from the SPR to tackle high U.S. fuel prices, which have contributed to soaring inflation. The Biden administration is weighing the need for further SPR releases after the current program ends in October, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm told Reuters last week. A DOE spokesperson later said that the White House at the time was not considering new releases behind the 180 million barrels. So, the inflation is because of high gas prices. High gas prices, which were in no way related to U.S. meddling in any sort of foreign affairs, in no way related to Saudi Arabia giving... OPEC the finger and going off for a diddle session with BRICS. In no way, right? And see, here's where people are going to call me a Kremlin stooge or something. Because I'm being all mean about how the U.S. is dealing with taking a side in the Ukraine conflict that so happens to also embolden the biggest global movement of Nazis. Um, so let me just, uh, preface this, uh, by saying that, uh, BRICS doing business with Saudi Arabia doesn't make them any better than the U.S. doing business with Saudi Arabia, and the fact that either are willing to do business with Saudi Arabia's oil is all the evidence you need to know that this is a corrupt regime full of bullshit who doesn't give a goddamn motherfuck about human rights. Russia included. Is that enough for you? Am I not a Kremlin stooge for a second? Can you open your brain for just a little bit and let some information in? Good. Maybe. If you said yes, I can't hear you. Um, so, the whole thing here is that they are releasing more oil because of that. And also... You know, it couldn't at all be because the pandemic was handled by a massive lockdown that shuttered a lot of small businesses and resulted in a great, huge fucking economic downturn that caused people to not have the resources necessary to thrive. So Biden and Trump both gave them little tiddly winkles of less than... $2,000 $2,000 each to tie the economy over, but it was still like trillions of dollars of money printed. It couldn't be that. And all of this, you know, massive spending uh, couldn't have also coincided with tens of billions of dollars going to new police hiring programs and The Safer America Act, which is going to massively ramp up the police presence, which has still gotten massively empowered by Biden's crime bill and Patriot Act. Couldn't be. Couldn't be that all of those are the drivers of inflation. It has to be current fuel prices, and the U.S. had nothing to do with those being so high. You know... Or, or the billions of dollars that got thrown at Big Pharma. Or, or the fact that the corporations responsible for controlling a significant amount of the wealth in the country are much richer than they were at the beginning, thus giving them much more purchasing power to lobby politicians when most politicians that get selected into office, and I say that instead of elected because that's what it is, that get selected into office, get selected because they spent more on their campaign, 
Because that's what Open Secrets says. It's the candidates who spend the most on their campaign who get in. It couldn't be that. It couldn't be any of that. It couldn't be the fact that the U.S. economy has a huge amount of money in mode with no production. It couldn't be the fact that the workers have less flexibility than ever because starting a business in this economy is reprehensible and they have to stick with their shit-ass employers or risk being evicted once the moratoriums collapse. It couldn't be any of that. It couldn't be the fucking crushing of Social Security, which was always a Ponzi scheme to begin with. It couldn't be the gradual ramping up of spending on the security state and the fact that the U.S. military-industrial complex is doing fucking bonkers while the S&P and Dow Jones continue to fucking point down. It couldn't be that. It has to be just because gas prices are a little high and the U.S. government had nothing to do with that. Right? Well, wouldn't it be great if the people that knew this suddenly had a much easier access to legal weed so that they could just puff, puff, pass and toke it down? Fucking forget that all this is happening. You know, get that indica to go into couch, relax for a bit, and pass the joint. It's fucking excellent. It's excellent, man. And so Circle K trended, of course, because strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And what are those strange things which are afoot? Well, if you noticed, Twitter is promoting Bloomberg again which is owned by Mike Bloomberg, who is one of the richest people in the fucking world. Much richer than Donald Trump, much richer than Bezos. He's rich. He's really fucking rich. And his net worth is all about making articles which um, benefit from the economic conditions created by himself and his cohorts. He said... That uh, if you wanted to, uh, you know, find the, the, the crimes, you just go into minority communities with black and brown um, men in their early 20s, 18 to 24, I think was what he said, and throw them up against the wall. You could just Xerox a description is what he said, because he was mayor of NYC and he practiced racist policing policies. And now his fucking rag, Twitter constantly fucking pushes is being like, weed is coming to U.S. gas stations next year, man. And then they repeat it because they think stoners are stupid. Weed is coming to U.S. gas stations. Circle K, the global convenience store chain, signed a deal with Green Thumb Industries, one of the largest U.S. cannabis producers, to sell licensed marijuana at the Florida Gasoline Retailers. The partnership will begin next year with 10% of uh, companies, 600 locations in the state. Green Thumb said. The deal is a global first, given that legal marijuana has so far been sold only in standalone dispensaries in the U.S. and with pharmacies in countries such as Uruguay and Germany. Isn't it, isn't it great? And, and so they're, they're talking about this, right? They're, talk, they're talking about how awesome this is. Americans will be able to buy marijuana at gas stations next year if this deal goes as planned. Gas station already sells cigarettes and beer, so why not weed? <laughs> Circle K and Green Thumbs deal will start with 10 Florida locations and hopes to expand. Is marijuana medical or more akin to beer or cigarettes? Given Florida is a medical-only state, Circle K locations that sell weed will have an interesting design. This could be the push that the marijuana industry has been looking for to get its products in front of more consumers. Get the latest from Tiffany Carey. The dopes. (laughs) A paper run by a corrupt New York mayor who used 
Biden's crime legislation and a bunch of other shit to throw minorities up against the wall, parading around this white chick to talk about how weed is going to be legal like for medicinal use and purchasable at gas stations. Well, I guess this will get people rushing back to the gas stations when prices are fucking high, right? Look how many RTs this tweet got. Look at that shit. Five and 13 retweets and likes, respectively. Holy fucking shit. You're Bloomberg. You have so many fucking followers. You have 8.7 million followers. Who wants to bet that this is the kind of reason Twitter doesn't want to tell people how many bots they have? Because, you know, they might have to disclose that a significant amount of these huge, major, popular blogs and newspapers, etc., are astroturfed as fuck, and maybe their official sources would look less official if they had to compete and stack up against the common person on a more regular basis. Anyway, I just think that's funny. I think it's funny that suddenly this is happening. That suddenly Biden cares. By the way, I forgot to bring up in my video the other day that most people in prison for marijuana uh, are not in prison for simple possession alone, which means that his pardons basically affected nobody. So he, he, he grifted on the legalization movement to get into office partially. That is, if elections even work, which I don't think so. But being generous and saying they do, um, he grifted to get there. And now he's grifting in order to uh, pacify people during times when there might be a little bit of resistance to some of this bullshit. When, when people are getting more and more angry with this government and more and more angry with the fact that it would rather prioritize tens of billions of dollars for a foreign conflict than get its own country the situation it needs to survive. Reminder, $20 billion a year would solve homelessness according to this fucking government, and they can't even spare half that to solve the problem in that way. They couldn't even spare half that, but they can spare close to 10 times that for Ukraine. And while they're doing it, they funnel the money through their domestic producers so that the money goes into, like, U.S. weapons manufacturers and shit like that. So that U.S. weapons manufacturers and other sorts of U.S. Uh, like businesses get the money first. So that the Ukraine, Ukrainian people, they have stuff that was bought with U.S. money, but only after U.S. companies directly profited from it. It's a fucking racket. And then the Ukrainian people are selling that. Because nobody's going to know where the gun came from. The Ukrainian people are selling these things. They're selling what they got because it's a profitable industry there too, and War profiteering isn't exclusive to the U.S. But, you know, game, respect, game, homie. Do what you gotta. I just feel like this is exactly what they want. It's, it's, like, it's like that, 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 that line from nothing more is let him burn and legalize whatever gets me high. That's, that's the goal, is to forget everything that's going on get high, and not do anything about it. And that is the opposite of what I want y'all to do. I want the takeaway from this video to be that they are planning terrible things and they want you too stoned to recognize it, too stoned to get prepared, too stoned to be strong enough to resist them, and most importantly, too stoned to do anything proximal to smashing the fucking state.